All right, so it's recording me. So say you throw something up, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pr problems on mastering physics that are like this. Okay, you throw something up in the air that, yeah, I'll make up positive x. That was lousy. Here, I'll fix it. So I'll make up positive x. I'll make, why did I make up positive yeah, that's x? that's y, right? Yeah. All right, so I make up oh, positive y. Ha ha. <laughs> We'll get this. this will be quick. Okay. All right. So while the projectile is right at that moment, that's what we're talking about, while it's at maximum height, right? Oh, yeah. Can so I tell me, you the velocity? Oh, is that well, I'm going gonna, gonna to new page for oh. a sec. Now let's divide it up into horizontal. And this is what you did in the lab, right? In vertical. Mm -hmm. And just do a velocity graph first. What, when you what's draw this these, graph are you graph referring like? to the whole graph or just that moment in time? That the whole, whole let's time. do the whole time. Okay. The, it would be... So in the horizontal oh, direction. Horizontal. Horizontal line, but, like that? Yeah. Okay. And then and vertical, isn't that... Up is positive, so it started at, well, when it was first thrown, yeah. it was moving upwards, right? Mm -hmm. And then it slowed down until it reached the top. And then it sped mm -hmm. up, right? So, yeah. Is that what you were thinking? That's what you told me a minute ago, right? Yeah. And, and then what's your acceleration graph look like? That's going to be in the negative area, so horizontal line like that. Where on the velocity graph is maximum height? On this velocity graph? Mm-hmm. It's okay. So, so the question was where on our velocity graph right here is our maximum height? Right here. Okay, that's actually the velocity when at oh, zero the, seconds when oh. it was launched. Keep going. Like the maximum height of the, the when ball? the when the ball was in the air. At what point on that graph is the ball at maximum height? At the top of the position graph. This is a velocity oh, the graph. velocity graph. So where on this velocity graph, this is velocity in the y direction. Right here. Okay, now you got it. So right there, and the y velocity is zero. Mm -hmm. At that moment, what's the slope? It's zero. This is the slope, yeah. It still has a slope. It's a line. Well, isn't the slope yeah, the same as it always was? It's a negative slope. What number would that be? Am I supposed to know the numbers? You, you should. Oh, negative one? Or? Keep trying. Am I, where this, am I getting this, the numbers The from? slope of this, this velocity graph in the y direction is your acceleration in the yeah. y direction, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Oh, so negative 10. Okay. Or, um, yeah, so negative point nine, nine nine, point Yeah. Nine. So that's... That's our acceleration. You notice it never changed. Mm -hmm. Even at the moment when our object stopped briefly, yeah. it didn't stop in the horizontal direction. The object was always moving. At the maximum height, object was still moving horizontally with the same speed as it always was. Mm -hmm. But in the vertical direction, the object slowed down, right? And then it stopped in the y direction only. So at that moment, it's still moving in the x direction. And its acceleration is the same as it always was. Mm -hmm. The acceleration never changed. It's weird to think that an object's not moving for an instant, but it still has acceleration. But just because your velocity is zero doesn't mean your velocity isn't changing. Your velocity is in, still in the process of changing because it's still under the influence of what force? Uh, and because the force due to gravity is pulling down, we still have the same what? In the, yeah, the two are connected. So the only way you would not have any acceleration in the y direction is if you somehow turned off the Earth's gravity field, which you can't do. It's confusing because, yes, at that moment, the y velocity is zero, but the fundamental cause of the acceleration, it has nothing to do, the acceleration has nothing to do with your velocity at a moment. Your instantaneous velocity is irrelevant. The point is, 
your instantaneous velocity is always changing. Who cares what number it is, zero or a, a million? The point is your velocity is always changing the same amount because the only force acting is the force due to gravity, which by Newton's second law is equal to ma. So if you do a force diagram for your projectile, you get a force down, right? And that means the only force acting is the weight. That means your net force is the same exact amount in the same exact direction, which is ma. And when we're talking about an object accelerating, ma is, we call ma, um, this is our net force, right? Net force equal ma, that's second law. Well, our net force is just the weight of the object, or I could call the weight force due to gravity, right? Same thing. So force due to gravity is our only net, is our net force, it's the same magnitude, and it's going to equal mass times g. G is the symbol we give to the acceleration due to gravity. And it's that net force that causes the same acceleration due to gravity the whole time. Anyway. This is just going to be on the, uh, the t-axis. Say it again. The slope of this is zero, so it's going to be on the t-axis. Oh, for, okay, so in the horizontal motion, we're talking about, yeah, that's right. That's right. The whole time the acceleration is zero in the x direction. So we divide, for a projectile, we just separate the motion into horizontal and vertical because we have a different acceleration in the horizontal direction as we have in the vertical. So we can use, we can use second law here and say that we have no acceleration because there's no net force in the horizontal direction. And in the vertical direction, when we apply second law, we get a net force down, which gives us an acceleration down. Hee hee. No worries. Here.